When a company introduces a new product, they get all of their marketing team together and they begin to plan out a campaign. They're going to roll it out in print. They're going to roll it out with commercials. They'll roll it out with Facebook ads. And, and there's a big thing about that. They may even, they may get some celebrities to say, I use this product and my life has been forever changed. And by the time you watch those commercials, by the time you read those those testimonials, by the time you see the Facebook ads, you go, honey, I, we got to have that. The prophets of old told us that a Messiah was coming. And so you think God would say, okay, let's roll out a big deal. We'll, we'll get the prophets, we'll get the scholars, we'll get the philosophers, we'll get all of them to endorse the Messiah. We'll, we'll ask King Herod if he'll, if he'll kind of write us out an edict declaring this Jesus day, and, and, and we'll roll this thing out in a big, flashy kind of way. God says, no. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, Joseph and Mary, they're not going to get a, a room. And, and not only that, the only place left is going to be back in a, in a barn, a, a cave that was dug out. And, and they won't even be able to get a cradle. So they're going to have to just put out that baby and, and wrap it up on whatever they can find and kind of put him in the feeding trough. And, and, and the big rollout? We're going to have some animals there. We'll bring some sheep and some donkeys, maybe a couple of chickens and some ducks. Camels will come later, but but we'll 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 have the animals there. They'll witness this thing. You know, rather than kings and philosophers and theologians, why don't we invite some shepherds? And, and those shepherds can come, and they'll be the first eyewitnesses. And you know what we're going to do with those shepherds? We're going to cut them loose. We're going to let them tell everybody, and everybody be amazed. What an incredible plan. None of us would have thought of that. None of us would have sat down and and plan that kind of rollout for the King of kings and Lord of lords. But that's what God did with his only son. Last week we began this series called The Perfect Gift. And we talked about the gift of peace. How important that is. Today we're going to move, as I mentioned to you, we're going to move from peace to joy. Because on that first morning that the newborn king was laying in a manger, proclaimed to the world on that morning was joy to the world. So I want you to take your Bibles and turn with me to Luke chapter 2. We're going to pick up the story in verse 8. And I hope you brought your Bible. If you didn't bring your Bible, I, I, we printed it out in the notes, the handout the, as you got as you walked in. We, we're going to have it up here on the screens. Uh, if you don't like reading, if that just troubles you, then just close your eyes and listen. In the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over the flock. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, a Savior who is Messiah, the Lord, was born to you in the city of David. And this will be a sign for you. 
you will find a baby wrapped snugly in cloth and lying in a feeding trough. Suddenly, there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to people he favors. When the angels had left them and returned to heaven, The shepherds said to one another, let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened to which the Lord has made known to us. And they hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a feeding trough. After seeing them, they reported the message they were told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary was treasuring up all these things in her heart and meditating on them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard, just as they had been told. (laughs) What an unlikely marketing plan. Why in the world does he choose shepherds? Shepherds are way down here on the socioeconomic scale. If you compare that to kings or prophets or philosophers or theologians, they're way down there. Not only are they way down there just as a group, who is shepherd? Well, shepherds are going to be the old men who are not capable of going to battle, and it's going to be the young men who are not quite ready so they can chase sheep and keep wolves away and coyotes. It's not a likely group that would be the very first in a lot of ways. Let's look at some of those this morning. The shepherds were the first to experience the joy of the Savior. When that angel showed up, now again, I have to say this every year because I need to remind you that when that angel showed up, the angel of the Lord, it is not that beautiful little girl that is sitting on top of your tree with a long flowing dress. That's not the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord is a mighty warrior, and it would have scared you spitless. The angel of the Lord caused them to tremble. The King James Version of this says, And they were sore afraid. They were terrified. These these shepherds had never seen anything like this. Not only was it an angel of the Lord, this mighty warrior for God, but the glory of the Lord showed all around him. He was lit up. And they were scared. They were terrified. They were the first to experience that. But what does the angel say? Don't be afraid in verse 10. Look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. The message of the birth of Jesus produces great joy. Why in the world? Do we keep it as such a guarded secret? Why do we hold on to it so tenaciously that nobody probably even knows that we have that joy? We don't do that with any other good news. I mean, when you have a baby, you're telling everybody about it. When you get married, you celebrate. When you have an anniversary, you celebrate. When your teenager leaves to go somewhere else, you celebrate. We have all kinds of places and times that we celebrate. Why is the greatest news the world has ever known such a guarded secret? Why do we hold on to it instead of sharing it with everyone? Well, here's what we need to see. God chose the shepherds to be his first evangelists. The most unlikely group of evangelists you could find. I mean, these guys 
were not well regarded in the community necessarily. I mean, there was nothing wrong with them. There's no indication that, that these were social outcasts or, or somehow morally corrupted or something like that. They're just they're just way down there on the list. They're just young guys. They're the old men, too old to fight. They're, they're just not a, per, a prestigious group. And yet, this is the group God chooses. You know why I think God did that? I think God did that to give you and me hope. If God would have picked just the elite, if, if the very first ones to share the gospel would be these well-polished, great speakers, great orators, men of, of great conviction, women of great character, if he'd have chose this high level, we'd have went, yeah, well, they did that. Yeah, sure, but pff, what about me? I think God chooses the low end of the scale for us to go, oh, okay. Maybe I can do that. If these uneducated shepherds could do that, I mean, my goodness, they didn't even have a training course. They didn't even have six weeks of evangelism training. They didn't go to seminary. God said, no, we're going to set the bar really low. We're going we're to put the cookies low on the shelf so everybody can reach them. You know why? Because God wants you and me. And he wants to take away all the excuses. And we can say, if the shepherds could do this, so can I. Proclaiming the joy of this good news is still needed today. There's never been a time that it was not. I mean, this is the most important time of the year, but it is the most important time of the century. I mean, we, lived in, we live in a world full of bad news, don't we? There are people all around you that are desperate. In fact, the month of December by itself stands out as the most challenging month for mental health of any of the months. And part of it is this high expectation of we put on seeing our families and making sure everything's okay with our families and getting along with our families and, 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 and buying the presents and getting the right present and not forgetting somebody's name. I mean, all the stress that begins to build up around this season, we put on ourselves. But you rub shoulders every day with people that need good news, that need to hear some good news, that need to know that God loves them. And so he uses these shepherds. The heavenly host were the first to praise God for this joyous occasion. They were the first ones to sing of his praises, to give him glory. Look at verse 13 with me again. Suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth. To people he favors. Now you've got this heavenly host. We don't know how many. I'm not sure how many a host is. I know this. It's a bunch. Now think about it. When you go outside tonight and you look out, so let's say the clouds have cleared and it stopped raining and you can, you can no longer be fearful of the terrible storm. And you walk outside and you look up and you go, wow, there are a lot of stars would not even come close if you drove out to, say, Joshua Tree, out in the middle of that national, it's not a forest, is it? It's a national park. And if you go out in the middle of that, you get out away from all the light pollution of the big city. Boy, the stars are going to be brilliant. You can see the Milky Way. You can find the Big Dipper. That is still nothing compared to the heavenly host. It could have been thousands. It might have been millions. We don't know. What we do know is that it was overwhelming. 
And so you may have said, well, you know, he's he going to pick some others besides the shepherd. But let me tell you, he did it right with the shepherds. They were amazed. Not only were they afraid because of the angel of the Lord, but now the whole heavenly host singing praise to God, glory to God in the highest. Discovering the Savior is a life changing experience. We will never be the same the moment we receive Christ as Savior. The moment we understand He is Messiah. He is the anointed one. He's the one, the Christ. The moment we get that, the moment that sinks in, we're never going to be the same. That is why your story is so powerful. Because the good news of the gospel is going to bring peace to those that receive it. The good news is going to take that uneasiness about our future away because we know it's secure. We know that God loves us. We know that he wants the best for us. We know that he delivered the very best for us. Now this heavenly host is proclaiming it for all to see and for all to hear. And the shepherds were a front row audience to the heavenly host. I, I imagine that it is the most spectacular thing anyone's ever seen. Thousands upon thousands singing glory to God in the highest. <laughs> Immediately following that, the shepherd said, man, we got to go see this kid. We got to go now. What an introduction to the Messiah. The shepherds then become the first eyewitnesses of the birth of the Savior. They were the first one to lay eyes on him, besides his mom and dad, besides Mary and Joseph. Look at verse 15 with me. When the angels had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what's happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the feeding trough. They did not waste time. They didn't have a meeting. They didn't stop for coffee. They went straight to Bethlehem. They hurried off, in fact. There was an urgency to see the newborn king. And discovering the Savior is a life-changing experience. It happened for the shepherds, and it can happen to anyone here. It happens to any one of us that are willing to surrender ourselves to Jesus as Lord. It happens that moment we turn ourselves over to him. We will never be the same. That's why we can share, because it is good news. But the personal encounter with Christ is undeniable. The personal encounter with Christ is undeniable. People can debate you about your theology. They can debate with you uh, on all kinds of avenues and realms, but, but they can't deny your testimony, how you came to know Christ, how Jesus has changed your life. Can't be debated. Well, they can believe it or not believe it, but it can't be debated because it was your experience. That is why God, in his marketing plan, has chosen the most powerful marketing tool that Madison Avenue has ever come up with, and that is simply the personal testimony. Somebody standing in front of a camera saying, I tried this, and it's good. You should try it too. And when Christ redeems us, when he changes our life, we're never going to be the same. And now we can say, listen, I have received Christ, and I've never been the same since. They can argue with you, but they can't deny it because it's your story. We also see that the shepherds were the first to share the birth of Jesus. So after seeing this, what did they do? They immediately, they reported the message they were told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed 
at what the shepherds said to them. Why? Well, because one, they're shepherds. Two, because they told of a miraculous birth that had taken place. They told of the glory of the heavens by the heavenly host. And all that heard this story were amazed. No place in here was there a training session. No place in there was there somebody coaching them on what to say or how to say it or how to handle all the objections that might come with it. The shepherd said, look, all we know is that we saw the angel of the Lord. He announced that the Messiah was born. We went and saw him, and we've never been the same. And everybody was amazed. You may think God can't use me. God can use you. If he used these shepherds, he can use you because it is your story. Because once you've received the gospel, you have to share it. You must share it. You can't keep from sharing it. You have to, you have to purposely not share it because it's so important. And God, well, God gets all the glory every time we share it. He's the one that's glorified. It's not about us. It's never been about us. It's always been about him. He gets the glory. And when we've been changed because of an encounter with Jesus, it changes everything about us. It changes our service. We no longer do things to benefit us. We do things to benefit others. We no longer put ourselves first. When we talk about joy, one of the acronyms that helps us remember that Joy is Jesus, others, and yourself. That's where genuine joy comes. And so all of a sudden, we serve now for his glory. We give. This is, this is one of the greatest giving seasons of the entire year, not just for our church, but really for our culture. I mean, you've, you've seen how many giving opportunities, the shoe boxes and and what we did with the Christmas store, and, and now the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, you're going you're gonna to get, those of you who are in person, are going to get to hear someone who's an actual beneficiary of the Lottie Moon Christmas offering as they serve overseas. Because of security reasons, we won't be able to do that online, but, but you're going to get to hear about that, and you get to participate in this offering we collect every year. You're going to get to participate in the end of your offering that allows us to continue to do what God has called us to do as a congregation. It's a great giving season. Why? Because we've been changed. We're no longer the same. That's the difference the Messiah makes, and that's why there is joy that we share. So what is our next step? Where do we go from this place, from this point? Well, we cannot keep the good news to ourselves. So your next step is to share it with someone this week. Find someone that you can tell your story to. Even if it's another Christian, you just get practice. But then start saying, God, would you show me someone? I promise if you do pray that prayer, he'll put someone right in your path. Because this is how important the good news is. This is why it brings joy, joy, joy down in our heart. Where? Down in our heart. We've got the joy, 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 joy down in our heart. Down in our heart to stay. But I'm so happy. So very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. Down in my heart. I am so happy. So very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. Now, if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on a tack. You've been learning that since the first grade. Now it's time to live it. Live out that joy that's down in your heart. In just a moment, our worship team is going to come and, and lead us in a time of commitment. Now, I'm going to be hanging out right here. There'll be others in the wings that will be ready to pray with you. 
If you'd like for someone to pray with you, we're here to do that. Or you can kneel at this altar and pray. You can do it directly to God. You don't need one of us, but we're always here to help. But if you're ready to receive Christ, it's a matter of repenting from your sin and believing that Jesus died for you. He gives us that joy, that gift of joy, when we're willing to turn from our sinfulness, because all of us are sinners, and believe that he died on the cross for us to pay for our sin so that we could spend forever in heaven with him. So would you stand with me and let me pray for us? And if you'd like to receive Christ, if you'd like to have someone pray with you, you come join us down here and we'll do that. Father, thank you for this moment. Thank you for the joy that came on that, that first Christmas morning. Thank you that like the shepherds, we can share with others. Help us to be bold. In Jesus' name, amen.